Our names are Rebecca and Josh Tickell. We're filmmakers, and our specialty is making films about the environment. In 2010, we made a movie called The Big Fix about an oil spill that happened in Louisiana. While filming that movie, I was exposed to a toxic chemical dispersant. <coughs> My health suffered considerably, and I had skin rashes and other problems. Doctors said that I may even have problems conceiving or bearing children. In spite of the warnings, we decided to try to have kids anyway. Even knowing the risks didn't make it any less devastating when I had a miscarriage. My love, little person that gets you as dad is very lucky. Really? <laughs> now she's looking at you. Oh, she oh! lifted her hand. Oh, my God. That's so... <gasps> when we got pregnant with our daughter, the doctor said there was a birth defect and there was a chance she wouldn't make it. Oh. I love you, Athena. <laughs> Miraculously, she was born healthy, and happy. Camera. Action. But for two years, she had chronic sicknesses. And we were in and out of hospitals almost constantly. So we decided to look at all of our options. And nothing was off the table. Doctor, if your depression worsens or if you have unusual changes in behavior or thoughts of suicide. Symptoms of a serious allergic reaction may include itching, rash, or difficulty breathing. High blood sugar can lead to coma or death. Other risks of chest pain, shortness of breath, diarrhea, severe stomach pain, or tenderness. The dichotomy between alternative and traditional medicine is a false one. So first off, what we have to talk about is what exactly is CBD? There are some natural doctors out there who literally claim they know everything. So they're telling you about vaccinations, they're telling you about everything that you should do. I think you need to be very cautious as a consumer of healthcare. There are medical doctors out there who offer some of this hocus, yes. I'll call it hocus pocus. Virtual dolphin therapy. It's the most relaxing experience you could ever have. Snake massage therapy. Urine therapy. And the only thing I can do is to drink my own pee. Finally, a friend gave us a copy of the book called Earthing. The premise? By planting your bare feet on the ground, your body will begin to heal itself. Could such a simple thing help our daughter get better? It sounded too easy. We were skeptical. And as it turns out, we weren't the only ones. Please welcome Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> There are a couple of things, and I've written them down here. For instance, tell us about earthing. What is earthing? Er oh, okay. It's kind of, they say that we've lost touch with sort of being barefoot in the earth and that there's some type of electromagnetic thing that we're missing. That and is so true. It's good to take your shoes off and walk in the grass. Okay. I don't know what the <laughs> we talk about. <laughs> so we decided to consult the experts. In simple terms, Grounding is literally putting your bare feet on the ground. When you do that, you're in contact with the Earth, and Mother Earth is endowed with electrons. And these electrons are literally absorbed through your feet. It's like taking handfuls of antioxidants, but you're getting it through the feet. Grounding means connecting to the Earth to support the specific function of the organs of your body. It supports the body as a whole, but it specifically supports organ systems down to the tissues and the cellular function of the entire body. Grounding provides a steady 
we call it a ground plane. It's like lying naked on the earth. But where I come from in the winter, you can't do that. All the systems in the body, all of them that we've measured, and we've measured just about everything you can think of, everything goes to balance, to normal, when you're grounded. The man who started the grounding, a.k.a. earthing movement, is Clint Ober. Well, Clint, I mean, we're, first of all, we're super honored to have you here. You know, your book has been everywhere and everyone has been telling us about it. It's kind of a phenomenon and it's also kind of hard to believe. I have to confess, when I first heard about earthing, I was super skeptical. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, is that a common reaction that you get from people? Yes. And I was myself. It took me 20 years to dig this out of the dirt and get it to the world. <laughs> And I questioned it all the way because it just didn't make sense. And what is the main reaction you get from people when they get this information? The response has been pretty much uh, a lot of skepticism, which it, because it sounds absurd. How can I just take my shoes off, put my feet on the ground, and reduce inflammation? Because the world has been about everything from oatmeal to blueberries to you name it. It's one of those things you can talk until you're blue in the face, but until you experience it you're not gonna believe it. But once you experience it, then uh, the biggest trouble you have is trying to explain it to somebody else. So a lot of the naysayers, I mean, they, like most of the guys say, well, if this were true, I would have known about this. I would have uh-huh. heard about this. Somebody would have told us this. This can't be something brand new that we don't know about. And I just say, I'm sorry, it is something, something new. I mean, something we accidentally, we accidentally disconnected from the earth. Yeah. Being there for everybody to be able to wear shoes, inexpensive shoes. That was a real advancement. Um, but on the other hand, nobody knew the consequence or the side effects of, of um, losing our ground, losing our electrical ground with the planet. I grew up around Native American people, primarily the Cheyenne and the Crow. My dad died when I was quite young, but I remember even before he died, we didn't have a lot of money or a lot of material things. But in the Native American culture, it was very interesting that nobody owns anything. You can't own land. You can't own trees. How can you own this? And then there was an event where one of my friend's his sister, a uh, little Indian girl, had, I believe it was scarlet fever. She'd been to the doctors and all that kind of stuff, and she wasn't getting well. And they brought her home, and there was nothing they could do for her, and everybody was real traumatized by it. I remember one of the elders, they dug a pit. And put a little bit of straw in it, whatever. And they put her in the, in the ground on the earth. Built a fire there and just sat with her for like days. Next thing we knew, she was up running around. She was okay. (laughs) It was just awesome. Just totally awesome. There were many things that, that kind of stuck in my memory as I got older. And one of them was, I remember coming home one day and we were gonna go into one of the kids' teepees with his parents. and the mother said, take those shoes off, they'll make you sick. Why she would say they would make you sick, well, I wouldn't have had a clue at that time. It turns out that today, we Americans don't spend a whole lot of time grounding. That may have something to do with our love of shoes. 
Tell me about your relationship with your feet and shoes. I, I wear them. My shoes? I love shoes. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it's more of an addiction. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much need them for everything. So you want to stub your toe everywhere. It's like your shoes kind of represent you. I feel anyway. Yeah, but you guys, you gotta get the shoes first, and then that matches the outfit that's gonna go with it. You can never just, it's not clothes first, then shoes later. It's shoes first, then clothes. Yeah. <laughs> that's like my biggest thing. I stub my toe every day. How many pairs do you think you have? I think of Doc Martens alone, I have 10. Oh God, no. Um, maybe 10, but only a few pairs that I like. I'd say 50 or 60 pairs of shoes. Have you guys ever heard of grounding? No. 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 <laughs> What is that? Do I know much about grounding? Yeah, I have two kids. Yeah, I ground them all the time. Grounding? Oh, it's like um, spiritually, like, connected. becoming connect like more grounded and connected to your thirst. There are some people who think that walking barefoot could bring some health benefits. What do you think of that? Uh, I agree but disagree i don't know that's a load of baloney <laughs> i don't know like when you go barefoot and you like touch like the warm sand or you go like to the ocean it just like feels like better like your body like feels more calm or something i think the benefit if we could would give me my, me personally more of like a connection to my life to all the life around me you know what i mean now that you think of it i mean when i go barefoot maybe at my house or something it feels nice maybe that's the stint that we have it's things that we don't even recognize like shoes in the first place. Do you feel like more people could benefit from being grounded? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. It's healthy. It's healthy. It's natural. I actually got yelled at a lot by my parents because I would try to go barefoot everywhere, even in the snow. Uh, barefoot's like, for me, I, f I just don't feel comfortable, <laughs> I guess you can say. But like, I don't know, it's just not really my, my trend. Oh, I went through a mall barefoot Oh, she, my shoes yeah. broke. She loves to try to sleep with the shoes on. I'm like, shoes off the bed. <laughs> what helps you get grounded? Um, good shoes. <laughs>
Basically, what we're trying to demonstrate, what we're going to demonstrate here is to show that when you stand barefoot on the earth and you touch the earth, that your body is conductive. And what this is, is basically a con continuity meter. But so what I'm going to do is plug it into the earth like so. And I'm going to put my hand on it and you, you can see, or my finger on the back of it, you can see that the light turns green and that means that I'm grounded. To illustrate this, Sam here is wearing a pair of tennis shoes and when he puts it on, turns it on, you can see that he's not grounded. But because I am grounded, I am barefoot on the earth, when I touch Sam, he turns, he is naturally grounded. December 7th, Like many great discoveries, Clint Ober stumbled onto grounding as a result of an unusual sequence of events. I got involved in the cable industry in the early 60s. I first learned the need to ground cable signals as we were developing the industry. When you run a wire into the house, before you can go into the house, you have to ground the cable. Grounding is to maintain the entire system in a stable electrical environment. I mean, you have miles of wire hanging up there in the air. If there's lightning in the air, it's going to hit the cable. And so what you want to do is create a path to ground for the lightning so that it doesn't enter the house or blow up the TV or create a fire. So any electrical event is maintained at Earth potential, automatically equalized with the Earth and eliminated, neutralized. Clint had a background in the cable TV industry and he knew that cables that come to your home with TV programs have to be grounded. If they're not, two things can happen. You get snow on the screen, the picture is terrible, and the other, is you get a knock on the door from the Federal Communications Commission because the signal is disturbing aircraft communication. It leaks into the environment. Just as ungrounded signals wreak havoc on radio communications, there's growing concern that because we are not grounded, we absorb tremendous amounts of electromagnetic radiation from our modern devices. EMF stands for electromagnetic field. We are all immersed in electromagnetic fields from Wi-Fi, from the wiring in our homes, and it disturbs our electrical balance. We get charged. Inside of our bodies, we get electrically charged. Some people have as much as 20 volts on their bodies, and that's not good for you. But in our natural state, the Earth has a built-in system to ground our bodies. Unbeckons to us, we live inside a battery. The surface of the Earth is charged negatively, and the ionosphere, which is a layer of the atmosphere about 60 miles up, which is ionized by the sun, meaning that the rays of the sun are so strong that they split the molecules in two, a positive charge and a negative charge. The sun spews out electrons, they come to the Earth, they hit the ionosphere, they charge the ionosphere, and periodically the ionosphere releases lots of electrons. It's called lightning. The negative charge are transferred to the surface of the Earth through lightning mainly, and the positive charge stay 60 miles up. The surface of the Earth is electrically conductive, and wherever you are, standing barefoot on the Earth or connected to the Earth, you are collecting electrons that came from the sun. The problem arises when we don't have negative charge. We need grounding just as we need air and we need sunshine. So the TV industry, Clint, he had to make sure all the cables were very well grounded and then he started to wonder if people need to be grounded. And what I saw with cable TV was, it was bigger than Billings, Montana. The world was bigger than where I lived. I ended up in Denver, Colorado, 
uh, working for Telecommunications, Inc. One day, I was home with my children, and I had bought them computers. We could do checkbooks and play games. That was all we could do with them back then. It just dawned on me that was, I said, that's a TV set without a signal. So I, I had this brainstorm, and I thought, well, let's go get all these wire services together and put them into a unified data stream, feed them over the satellite and down the cable system, feed them into a computer. And the main thing that happened at that time that was probably very significant for the cable industry was we created the first cable modem. It changed the world in a day, in a moment. I was living in a 5,000 square foot A-frame log cabin on top of a mountain in Evergreen, Colorado. I was 49 years old playing King of the Mountain, and I won. <laughs> I had everything you could imagine. Cars, home in Breckenridge, skiing. Most of all, I had a lot of art. I probably had, I hate to say it, but a quarter million dollars worth of art hanging in my bathroom over the commode. <laughs> I mean, because there was no place else to hang things. About 1994, 95, I was attending a lot of Christmas parties. And I got sick. One Sunday, I, I couldn't get out of bed, and I was turning yellow. I looked at my eyes were yellow. Everything was yellow. And so they took me to an emergency room. They couldn't figure out what was wrong but I was losing everything. My liver was shutting down. I was only 49 at the time, and they said, you need to think about getting your house in order because you're young enough to get a new liver, but you may not have time. I was on every IV, every type of antibiotic you can probably inject into a person. And they said that they had a surgeon that wanted to experiment and see if there was a way they could go in and cut out all the liver that had been damaged, which was the majority of it. I agreed to that because I really had no option. I remember I was in surgery. I thought that was the last time I would see. up a few days later in ICU and I remember my secretary was right here in my face and my first thought was I didn't know that you had died <laughs> the pain started coming on then I realized that I was still here it took about a year for my energy to recover one morning I woke up and I looked out the window and I noticed that everything was more energetic the sky was vibrant. Everything was vibrant. I thought I was left over for drugs. I didn't know. But I looked around the room that I was laying in, and I said to myself that this is all crazy. This house, everything is crazy because I, I almost died. All I had ever done was collect these things, and I spent my life taking care of them. I didn't own any of this stuff because when I die, you know, I go away. They really owned me. They owned my soul. I went through this feeling that I just had to get rid of everything, push everything away from me, anything that was material, even though I loved it and I spent my life collecting it and taking care of it. I had to push it away, so I called my children and I said, I want you to come and take whatever there is in this house that you want. One of them called the doc and said, there's something wrong with my dad. We, he needs to see a psychologist. And I remember seeing the psychologist and there's, there's nothing wrong with me. This, this is what I'm, I have to do this. After disposing and giving and getting rid of everything, I decided I wanted to change my life. And I bought an RV and I went on a road trip. <laughs> I ended up in Sedona, Arizona. One day I was sitting at a computer and the computer kept crashing. 
I knew it was static electricity, so I put a piece of tape across my desk and grounded it. Then I realized in that process that the outlet wasn't grounded, so I fixed it so that I could get rid of the static electricity. And I didn't think too much about it. I walked outdoors and I sat on a bench, and this tour bus pulled up. And it looked like they had just been to one of these uh, outlet malls, and white Nike shoes were on sale. <laughs> it just dawned on me, you know, I asked the question, I said, I wonder if it's possible that humans are, you know, we're no longer naturally grounded. I wonder if these shoes could be interfering with us. So that night I went to the hardware store and I bought a roll of metal duct tape and I just taped it across the bed. I threw a wire out the window and it had a ground rod outside. I connected to the ground rod on one side and connected to the metal duct tape that I had laid on the bed. So when I laid down on the duct tape, I was like grounded because it was connected to the earth. I woke up the next morning and I thought, holy cow, there's something going on here because normally for me to go to sleep, I had to take Advil. So I tried to find out what I could. The internet was hardly anything. This is back in 99. I went down to the University of Arizona and to one of their medical libraries, and there was nothing. And in fact, I even tried to find the cause of chronic pain. The cause of MS was unknown. The cause of arthritis, unknown. They didn't know. Nobody knew. So I thought, well, I'll go out to LA. I'll go to UCLA and ask them. They pretty much laughed me off campus. <laughs> they said, you expect us to believe that somebody's going to put a nail in the ground, tie a wire around somebody's toe, and it's going to make them sleep better? They said, get out of here. Go away. You're nuts. <laughs> so I ended up having to put together my own study. I found an anesthesiologist in San Diego, and he says, I don't think there's anything to what you're doing. There's got to be an anomaly here but I'll entertain you. He says, I will prove that you're wrong. And we grounded 60 people, and the reports that came in were unbelievable. TMJ disappeared, PMS disappeared, inflammation reduced, pain, everybody slept better. It's the first study that I did that was a legitimate study where we had quantifiable data. When they saw the study, everybody said, well, this is really pretty interesting. And we ended up attracting scientists, physicists. Like any important discovery, nobody was interested. They thought he was crazy. Now there are a lot of scientists who are interested. Researchers, MDs, MD, PhDs, PhDs like me. I'm very interested in biological questions. Earthing brings up some really profound biological questions. While these grounding studies were positive, what was grounding actually doing inside the human body? The answer may surprise you. Stephen Sinatra, who was a cardiologist from back east, was attending a convention and we sat down with Stephen and told him the story of what I was doing. He said, well, if you're affecting pain, he says, you need to be researching inflammation. You don't have arthritis, you don't have cancer, you don't have all these health disorders. What you have is chronic inflammation. To me at the time, inflammation was you sprain an ankle and it balloons up and gets red and sore and it's inflamed. And he says, no, he says, inflammation is different than that. We have so much inflammation in the body, and it comes out in illnesses. We go to a doctor with all these complaints, but a lot of it is silent inflammation, including my specialty, heart disease. Heart disease is an inflammatory process. So how do we reduce inflammation? The most abundant protein in the body is collagen. It's the building block of our tissues. And we have gazillions of collagen molecules in our bodies. They are all embedded in a gel. This gel has a huge surface area, and it absorbs electrons. 
and releases them when you have an injury. Inflammation is produced by neutrophils, which is a white blood cell. You have an injury, you have a damaged cell. And so these white blood cells come over and they encapsulate the damaged cell and they release reactive oxygen species, which rip electrons from the damaged cell and that destroys the damaged cell. White blood cells release free radicals at the injury site. They chew up any pathogens, bacteria, or dead cells. They clear the area. It's called the repair field. It's the place that needs to be repaired. Without earthing, some of the free radicals that are released into the repair field leak into the surrounding tissue. If there's not enough free electrons there to reduce the remaining radicals, they're gonna steal an electron from a healthy cell and in the process damage it. Then the message goes out to the immune system and another neutrophil does the same thing, eliminates that cell, and then you end up with a chain reaction. And this can create chronic inflammation, silent inflammation. You may not even know it's there, and it continues for years. If inflammation is the cause of all these health disorders, then I know that not enough rounding is the cause of inflammation, because if the body is grounded, you can't have inflammation. The initial grounding studies showed promise but there was still a big question. Was grounding really achieving these results in the human body? Or was it something else? A placebo effect of some kind? I am senior research medical scientist at North American Science Associates. I spent about 10 years working in the environmental area, five of those at the Environmental Protection Agency. And in 1980, I started working at the Food and Drug Administration, where I led a team of biostatisticians, and we reviewed clinical trials for new medical devices. I would guess that approximately 10% uh, of the medical devices that FDA sees from an inception would end up getting approval at the end of the day. So I would review them very critically. A couple of years ago, my 92-year-old mother was suffering from peripheral artery disease, and that would require them to do an intervention. They would go in and have to clean out her femoral artery, put in a balloon or stent. They usually have to go in every six or nine months to clean out the artery, and I felt at that age they couldn't keep doing this. I tried most everything and I was looking around and I saw this thing on earthing, that earthing might be helpful for peripheral artery disease. And I said, well, it's not gonna hurt her. I don't think it will really help her. So I purchased her an earthing sheet and had her sleep on it for one night. She was also having trouble hitting a forehand and this is a lady who had played tennis for 70 years and she just couldn't remember how to hit it. Next day, she had no trouble. So I said, there's definitely something here. In all my years in the medical device field, I had never seen any responses like this for any device or any drug. She's now 94. We play tennis five or six times a week. She leads a fully active life, cleans her house, does pretty much everything for herself. And we attribute this to the earthing. It, it, it's done a great deal. I was having problems, well, with my legs. And I, it was hard for me to walk, and I was quite certain I would never be able to play tennis and do other things that I wanted to do. And it improved greatly, and I went back to playing tennis. Not as good as before, but, but pretty good anyway. It just changed my life. I didn't have the worries that I had before that something bad might happen if I kept trying to do things. I should just go ahead and try everything. This is the biggest development I've seen in the medical field in my five decades in public health and my three decades in the clinical trial field in medical devices. I just have a hard time believing this is a uh, placebo effect.
you need electrons for energy. It's called the electron transport chain in mitochondria. It generates adenosine triphosphate or ATP. It's the energy molecule in the body. I tell athletes that before an event, stand 15 minutes in your bare feet on the grass and you will charge up your electron stores. And should you fall down and athletes fall down, you will not have inflammation at all. Uh, now, Matt, what are we going to be doing today? You want to just give a little overview? Well, you guys look a little pale yeah. and uh, maybe lack of energy. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to get some natural earth energy here. If you could think about the last time you were barefoot, like in nature, it probably wasn't very recently, you know? Can you walk us through it? What is the, let's earth. Yeah, yeah what is my let's first take, step? take the first shoes step. off, take first the step. shoes okay. off. Here, let's, okay. let's roll up the pants a little bit just to get a better look, okay. you know? Okay. So, I try to do it for about 15 minutes though. Okay. 15 minutes a day. Would you play barefoot? Ooh, good question. Oh, that's tough. Three and two. I first learned about grounding maybe 12, 13 years ago through one of the trainers for the Tour de France team from the US. And he was using it with many other athletes and with surprising results. And I think the surprising breath summarizes my response to it because it didn't seem to make sense. I think I became a believer once I started to explore the science. ATP is short for adenosine triphosphate. It's the energy currency of the cell. We're bioelectrical beings. That's the currency of our body. It's how it works. That's how we run our biological systems is by generating this electrical energy that's transferred. And when we connect to the earth, we conduct a surface in some way, there's a transfer of electrons that slowly go into our body. We tried to figure out how much charge the body takes in when you touch the earth. What happens is the body saturates with electrons practically instantaneously. It's so fast that you can't measure it. So electrons from the earth enter the body right away and they coat the red blood cells so that the cells repel each other. And then they can't clump and the blood viscosity goes down. It's easier for the heart to pump the blood the blood pressure goes down, all kinds of cardiovascular issues, they go away. In situations where we are insulating ourselves from this a surplus of electrons into our body, we're gonna get the absolute opposite. So instead of having low levels of inflammation in a thin blood, we'll have thick blood that's more likely to clot and our levels of inflammation tend to increase. And I'm, I'm just thinking on the way here, I was thinking about how maybe the thinning of the blood is the reason that all the physiological systems go into balance. Of all the grounding studies, the one that really got our attention is called Electric Grounding Improves Vagal Tone in Preterm Infants. In the study, 26 premature babies in an NICU were connected to grounding wires. The heart rates of the grounded infants stabilized. And their vagal tone, a critical measure of infant health, increased by 67% with grounding. So there are two things, there are the electrons from the earth and there's the electrical rhythms of the earth. And that's very important for setting our biological clocks. You and Oprah have a great relationship. You've done stuff together for a while. Well, a long time ago, I suggested to her that if she married me, she could be Oprah Chopra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
You're doing something um, with Oprah coming up. This is a energy of attraction, right? Is that what you have? Yeah. The world is constantly, every situation, every event, every relationship is really a reflection of yourself. Uh, okay, I, I would like if you, uh, you agree to it earlier, but sure. could, we, could you do a guided med a meditation with yeah. us? Two minutes? Sure. Uh, so would you all uh, put your feet firmly on the ground, keep your hands in your lap? Everything that we call the environment is actually our body. If everything wasn't as is in the solar system, the Earth wouldn't spin on its own axis and it wouldn't go around the sun. There would be no seasons. So your biological rhythms, circadian rhythms, are the Earth spinning on its own axis. Your seasonal rhythms is the Earth going around the sun and they're programmed into your body. If you disconnect from your cosmic body, because that's what the Earth is, part of our cosmic body. You, in a sense, create the separation that results in disruption of your biological rhythms. Everything linked from dis-ease, discomfort, to inflammation starts with this disconnect, everything. But now we know and that if somebody walks barefoot on grass or the earth or on the beach, at a very fundamental level, basically, the free radicals that are built up in your body as a result of stress and inflammation, they are neutralized. But what is really happening at a fundamental level is you're restoring your biological rhythms and bringing them in alignment, or you might say synchrony, with the earth, which is connected to the entire cosmos and slowly open your eyes. That was so cool. <laughs> Come on. I was trying to be... Thank you so much. Thank you. I am so grateful. The analogy would be a good orchestra. If they're all playing by themselves, what you hear is noise. But if there's a conductor, there's a kind of a coherence entanglement of these frequencies, you hear music. So there's a cosmic symphony that is playing itself out in your body right this moment. Maybe you can't hear the tune, but you're dancing to it anyway. If you take a microscope and you look at a piece of wood and you go down, 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 all of a sudden there's nothing there. There's molecules, but they're not even connected. What's holding them together? What's the force that's holding everything together? Electromagnetism. Our body is electrical. This is all electronic equipment. The heart, the lungs, the brain. I mean, this is electrical equipment. It's all electrical. Everything is electrical. Can we measure the effects reproducibly? The answer to that is yes. We have now have 20 studies. There's like, yeah, 20, 21 published studies in the medical literature on earthing and grounding. And this is peer review stuff. In simple terms, what earthing does is literally it squenches the fires of inflammation. And if inflammation is the source of all root illnesses, including Alzheimer's disease, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, I mean, the list goes on and on. If you can impact inflammation and, you know, squelch it, kill it, stop it, we're gonna be healthier beings. I didn't know anything about grounding. I had never heard of it at all, but I became a new mom and I had my first child and she had colic and she cried and cried and cried. First thing I did being a physician myself was take her to the pediatrician and remember distinctly leaving that pediatrician's office with a knot in my stomach because the first thing they told me is it's a baby, let him cry. Literally the only time I noticed that she wasn't in pain and the only time I could soothe her was when I was outside and I was barefoot and I had her in my arms and every time we were outside she relaxed. 
I noticed if I did use a stroller or if she was in a car, she was still in pain and uncomfortable. This is not placebo effect. Like she had no idea if I was wearing shoes or not. She doesn't know that. I'm holding her either way. And I just slowly started realizing this child can only take a nap and feel comfort is if she was on my skin, held skin to skin, and I was barefoot. She'd be dead asleep, and if I stepped in the house and took both my feet off the ground, she would wake back up and the pain response would come back. And I didn't know what it was called, and I didn't at that time feel comfortable thinking about using it in my conventional medical practice, but I just knew that this is what I'm gonna do to help my child. I was working with a mentor of mine, and she recommended that I ground my energy. That I didn't know what she meant by ground yourself. So the first thing I did was go home and look it up on the internet. And through doing a search uh, about grounding, I found Clint Ober's work and the book about earthing. And I realized that it's a real thing and a real healing modality with tons of medical literature behind it. The light switch went on. And I thought, we're doing things completely backwards here. A typical day for a child is completely ungrounded. Most children wake up sleeping on a bed that was not grounded in a house or a building or on a floor that was insulated from the earth. And then they go immediately into a classroom that's insulated. And even on recess, in the recess period, they go outside and are literally fenced in and are paved with asphalt. And then they have after-school activities, which are either indoors, or if they're outdoors, they are literally required to wear protective gear. And even if they're exercising for two hours after school, 100% disconnected from the earth. And then they go home, and they go inside, and they eat dinner, and they do homework all hours of the night, and then they pass out in an ungrounded bed. So that's a 24-hour period of time, completely ungrounded, and that goes on day after day after day. I was at a retreat weekend for a group of women. It's called Inspire through our national association. It's for uh, teachers who don't take care of themselves. Tra teaching us how to. The first day I got there and our leader said, you need to go ground. And I'm like, uh, okay. They grounded us. And within that half hour, there was no need for medication and I had been taking two Motrin every four hours for almost three weeks. The district that I am in already actually has, um, with Clinton, a, a school that has a grounding classroom. One of the reasons that the other teacher pushed so hard to get this room, she had a group of students that had significant behavior issues, and they would rip their shoes off and go running out of the room, and they would all over campus looking for them, they would always find them in the planters by the trees. But I had one teacher tell me in a special ed class that they had runners. And what a runner is, is a kid who just runs out of the classroom and they take off and everybody has to go find where the student is. I realized that these kids who are the runners they're running out to the far back corner of the school campus, and it's the only place that has grass, and they're sitting down on the grass. And so I went back and I talked to my special education director, and I said, can we try this? Can we try this with some of our students with autism? I brought it into my room, and I have a, a student with autism, very severe autism. He's completely nonverbal. And, you know, it's, it's a good day when I can get this child to sit for 10 seconds. I pulled my mat out, I cleaned it off, and I took his socks and shoes off, put his little feet on it. That boy sat for seven minutes straight and played with me. He sat for seven minutes straight. So I took that back to my boss, and that is something that our school district is looking into, is getting more schools with classrooms that have grounding in them. I've heard stories from teachers in classes where their students are grounded that they have half the level of referrals for discipline. Some students who were in tears because they were experiencing success when before they were experiencing failure with their behavior and discipline. I've heard stories from teachers with autistic children who have been grounded where they have less of what they call the meltdowns. And the meltdowns are 
less frequent and shorter and they come back into the classroom and they're learning more than they had learned prior to the grounding. How much of it is that they're just so out of control in their mind and there's so many things that they, and, and these kids, our campus is concrete. There's no place. Even when they're in PE, they've got tennis shoes on. There's no place for them to be grounded. It's amazing what happens, not just with the teacher at the front of the class, but what can happen with a student sitting in the class. And just think if every single student and every single teacher and every single classroom and every single school across this whole world was grounded. It turns out there's a reason kids love to put their feet on the ground. And these guys claim to know why. Hey, my name is Finian. I'm Lauren. And my name is Ryland. And we're Kiss the Ground. And our mission is to inspire participation in global regeneration, starting with soil. We evolved very connected to the soil with our feet in the soil, our hands in the soil. And what this means when you're connecting with it is just starting to be discovered. You know, there are papers and things in science that are just very recent coming out telling us that actually touching soil is helping to make your immune system stronger. You can feel it. When you're working in that regenerative relationship with nature, it feels different, it changes lives. And one of the biggest sources of suffering in life is the experience of being disconnected and disconnected from what? Nature. And the basis of nature is our soil. The coolest thing about connecting to soil and the planet is it really makes you happy. It feels good. And now we have science that shows that it's a cure for depression. So who, which one of you was the first one to discover earthing? I'm going to say it was Mary Alice. She was born before me. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> She's got 18 months of bare feet on the ground before I even hit that the ground. That might be running. an insult. Yeah, we actually went to the, the, the track when we first got together. We went over to Pepperdine University. She hadn't run since when? A long time. Yeah. And she's, I do yoga. And I was like, well, we need to go to the track. We went to the track and we ran barefoot in the grass for a couple of hours. She loved it. That was for fun. That was for fun. Yeah, we didn't even talk about grounding. It's just something that you do. So we get up, we watch sunrises, and then we usually go out for a hike. I remember the first time he was like, he stopped and he took his shoes, he didn't say anything, and he took his shoes off. I'm like, what are you doing? And he just started walking and didn't do anything. And he also closed his eyes. That was a whole other terror. I came from a very dysfunctional home. You know, I loved my family tremendously, but there was a lot of mental illness my grandfather being one of the greatest writers of the 20th century. He suffered tremendous mental health issues. And he also took his life in 1961, three months before I was born. I lost a great grandfather, two great grandfathers, another great uncle, an uncle, a cousin, and my own sister took, took her life. This house was filled with people that were tremendously tortured. A lot of yelling, there was a lot of drinking, there was a lot of self-medication, there was a lot of craziness that was happening. To sort of survive was, for me, getting out in nature, just any time I could be outside. And I'd find myself lying on the grass or lying in a field or lying in a meadow. That would make me feel better. And then it wasn't until I met Bobby that I realized that what I was instinctually doing actually was a very real way to address all kinds of inflammation. Inflammation isn't just physical. There is neuroinflammation. That's brain inflammation. Brain inflammation causes depression, causes all kinds of serious problems. This is a much bigger thing than just walking barefoot on the ground. This, this, this is helping, well, especially me, uh, helping me have a, a way more balanced life. My grandfather, you think of great artists, 
Some of the greatest writing that they do comes from when they were at some beautiful and specific place and their description of it. That comes from an understanding, from a connection to it. To know that there are solutions and there are solutions in nature. And one of the biggest solutions is that connection to nature. And people forget that first. It's sad because it is so accessible and it is so real to know that a grounded me, Marielle, or a grounded you or anybody else is different than the one who's not connected. And that's what grounding does. It pulls you into you, to who you are. You know, I think it's always the same thing. It's the thing that your mom said when you were a kid. Go outside and play. Go outside and get some fresh air. By the way, <laughs> a lot of grounding from this guy. 19 years old. Look at the feet. <laughs> yes. That's one grounded dog right there. I first heard about grounding, I want to say about seven years ago. It immediately changed my mindset to appreciating the ground. And then the history that we used to all be on the ground and sleep on the ground and wear shoes that were connected to the ground, not plasticized and disconnecting. And I thought, okay, this makes actually so much sense. How have I not been able to put that together before? <laughs> I mean, I've always loved nature. I grew up in nature. But the idea of actually putting my feet on the ground without shoes, it felt always good. But I didn't really connect that it actually could be good for my body. Because I know we're all electrical beings. So we're constantly being bombarded with everything sort of artificial and overstimulating. And I feel really sensitive to that. If I'm working, you know, long hours and have this electrical mic strapped on, acting and, and just being around everything so electrical, it starts to just exhaust me. And I think we all get so overstimulated by all the electrification around us. And I don't think it's doing us any good. <laughs> Big girl. <laughs> Our bodies are constantly being bombarded by everything electrical in our lives. And for me, I've learned that in order to recalibrate my body, I just need to put my feet on the ground barefoot, and it just sort of equalizes. And I also think it's like when you get intentional with putting your feet on the ground, you immediately still yourself, and you're able to just, again, reconnect back to nature, to the simplicity of of Mother Earth, of this great, huge planet, because you're appreciating what's under your feet. It's a whole like symbiotic relationship that we've disconnected from in such big ways. I mean, that just the simple act of putting your feet on the ground can give you so much and so much balance in your body and so much healing. It's like we're sucking the life energy through our through our feet, up our bodies, into, to, to, from our mama. <laughs> so bad. I can't, what, that's really embarrassing. It's hard because it's so easy and it's so simple. People are like, really, you're making a big deal of that? <laughs> Intuitively, it 100% resonates, and I'm raising my, daughter this way where I'm I want her to be barefoot outside as much as she can my husband likes being barefoot that's great I don't have to convince him to like take his shoes off animals always barefoot and I know just bringing them outside makes them happy so I'm just gonna keep doing that whether people want to make fun of me or not whatever you believe in when you're out in nature it feels bigger than you and it feels like you have reverence for what we have here. I've always been 
climbing mountains, running rivers, always had a garden wherever I lived. Lived in Hawaii and Alaska, where I did naked gardening. It was wonderful. But once you're in a wheelchair, all of that kind of goes away. I'm 58. I was a singer, dancer, actress for most of my career. But then at age 36, I woke up paralyzed one day from this rare disease called transverse myelitis. It affects maybe one in about two million people. And when it first happened to me, they didn't know what it was. And eventually they've come to realize it has to do with inflammation and it's an immune dysfunction. You know, your body attacking itself. At the same time, the doctors say, well, we don't understand it and we don't really know how to treat it, so we'll just treat the symptoms. And for 21 years, that's been my story. My niece actually sent me a grounding kit about three years ago. She knew that I couldn't physically in touch with the earth anymore and she heard about this and she thought it'd be the perfect thing for me. So I received it and my first impression was, okay, this makes no sense to me at all, but I don't want to hurt my niece's feelings. So I put it on the end of the bed and plugged it into the socket as per my instructions. And the first night, I couldn't feel anything. It didn't seem to make any difference. But when I woke up in the morning, my feet, which are always swollen, first time I tried it, there was no swelling in my feet. I could see the bones in my feet. And that hadn't happened probably in six months. I just made it a part of my life. After a couple years, it suddenly occurred to me, gee, everybody I know who's in a wheelchair has inflammation and swelling issues along with pain. So I called Marty and said, let me tell you about the Abilities Expo. Would you guys consider expanding your audience? He talked to Clint, thought it was a great idea, and now they're here. natural phenomena, a remarkable natural phenomena that exists right beneath our feet. Earthing or grounding is about connecting to this natural resource. And regardless of your condition, it can make you feel better. Here's the background. Throughout time, throughout history, humans were connected to the earth. We walked barefoot. We slept on natural animal hides. We were connected to the earth. But today, it's a different story. We sleep in elevated beds. We wear synthetic soled shoes. And even our wheelchairs are insulating us. When we make direct contact with the surface of the earth, our bodies receive a... 10 years ago, I was working with a holistic cardiologist and we wanted to do an article on grounding. And so he said to me, that the cardiologist said, you got to call Clint over. And so I went and I called Clint over. I spoke to him for five minutes and I realized this is not an article, this is a book. This is a huge discovery. Well, when I first heard about it, um, it was took it with a pinch of salt. It sounded a little, a little too good to be true. Having now experienced several friends and people on our team who have used grounding, the skepticism is pretty much gone. It's right behind us right now is one of my friends. Her mom is in a companion chair. 15 minutes ago, she was swollen legs. Feet were cold, hands were cold, and now they're not. And this is her first experience with grounding. That's 15 minutes of real life demonstration. So I'm pretty much a convert. I am 39 years old. I'm trying to take pride in that. I have, was diagnosed with MS 14 years ago. 
The first time I heard about grounding, I thought, get real. This seems crazy. My friend patched me up, and I sat there, and we all just talked for about 45 minutes. I found myself smiling, and that wasn't something that I did, you know, I just didn't. Um, I physically have more energy. It, I don't have the fatigue. I feel like I really can accomplish things. I can brush my teeth now without holding onto the counter. My balance is better. I just feel, it sounds silly, but I feel more grounded. I feel like my feet are really like hanging onto the ground and I'm there and. I do it every night. I sleep on a pad and um, I patch up my hands and sleep with a grounding blanket and I just really am obsessive because I'm noticing. I just finally look forward to, to tomorrow. Um, for the most part, it's been sleep. You know, she's been able to get through the night without having to get up like, you know, six times to go to the bathroom or anything like that. Um, her spasticity has gotten a ton better. She used to have like restless legs all night and that doesn't really happen anymore. It's been huge. It's been a big difference for her. I want everybody to try this. I don't want anybody to not experience this. Anybody who has pain, anybody who can't sleep that well, anybody who gets depressed, you know, I mean, these are all things that have been completely lifted out of my life. I used to feel like a burden, a real burden to my husband, to my family, and I don't feel like a burden anymore. I feel, I feel good and I feel like things are gonna get better. It's my miracle. As Athena began to ground more and more, we noticed a dramatic shift in her health. Athena, do you know what grounding is? It, yes. Yeah? What is it? It's when you put your feet or your whole body on Mama Earth and she heals you. That's right. How does she heal you? With her healing magic. With <laughs> her healing magic. And have you been grounding? Yeah? And what happened as a result of that? I did have to go to the hospital for a year. You haven't been to the hospital in a whole year. Amazing. We're so happy about that, aren't we? You don't like the hospital very much, do you? When we began grounding Athena, a very progressive doctor had suggested I also try it. He told me to lie naked on the ground. It sounded ridiculous, but I did it anyway. And then everything changed. I began to sleep through the night, my energy level shifted, and I got my libido back. Over the next six months, I kept practicing grounding and I lost 50 pounds. I wasn't expecting any of this. Hi, Clint. I was just trying to heal my daughter. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Thank you for coming to visit us. <laughs> no problem. I enjoyed it. the beautiful drive today. Yes. Wow, look at you. This is, this is insane. How did you do this? There is this incredible thing I need to tell you about. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's called grounding. Uh, <laughs> Come on in. Right. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Well, good to be here. I'm gonna get those shoes off. So the first thing I'm extremely excited to share with you is that our daughter has not been to the emergency room in many months now. You know, I can't tell you how many nights at 2 a.m. we wound up in the emergency room because she couldn't breathe. And now she's like any other kid, you know? She gets a cold, she has a normal cold, she sleeps through the night. You know, what, what can you attribute that to? Well, when children are sick and they get run down, they don't get good sleep, 
and they have inflammation in their body. She started grounding and she started sleeping better. The grounding is reducing the inflammation. She's working with a, a significantly improved immune system. It's called immunotherapy, get grounded and improve your immune system. So the surprise side effect of grounding our daughter was I got grounded. And as you can see, I've had a complete transformation. Can you explain what happened to me? Yes. As soon as you get grounded, the first thing that happens, uh, you quiet the sympathetic nervous system. And then eventually the adrenals will start to recover. But when your adrenals become exhausted because of too much stimulation here, then the sympathetic overdrives and then you end up with adrenal fatigue and that is the precursor to most all of these things, including weight gain. I never would have believed that you and I would be sitting here having this conversation. <laughs> Not in a million years. Uh, no. Have other women reported weight loss as a result of grounding? Yes. Not to the point that I could come out and say, well, get grounded and you're going to lose weight. It starts up here and starts, I mean, getting the pain out of your body, getting the stress, the anxiety, the irritability, the depression mm -hmm. out, of, out of the body. And then all of a sudden, the right hormones start to surface. Your energy comes up, metabolism comes up. It's, you know, health is not something we really have to work on. We have to let it be. We have to take the things that are interfering with our health, that are compromising our immune system, and remove them from our life. And then the body will go back to normal. So, like, um, why hasn't it caught on in, in mainstream? I can only say it will. There's a well-established, traditional, conventional system that relies on expensive intervention. So they'd like to perpetuate that, and they're not too interested in having some competition coming in for a lot less expensive to sort of sabotage their profit levels. Because their goal isn't to help humanity, their goal is, to, is really as corporations, is increase their profits. The question becomes, you know, how much of an influence has lack of grounding been in the epidemic of disease that we have? Is this grounding a factor? We have a pain epidemic, which has led to an opiate epidemic, a national crisis. So given the worldwide discomfort, unhealth, diseases, all of them are benefited by earthing. There's a resistance to integrating novel thoughts and many times new ideas aren't implemented until the people who hold the counter opinion die. <laughs> there are lots of people who don't want this to happen. I don't know why people critique it to death. I don't know why they do that. What uh, the skeptics need to do is try it out. The good thing about grounding is that you don't need a doctor to tell you to do it. You do not need a physician to recommend it to you. You can try this any time. It is your birthright because you live on the earth. I ground every day. Hey, I want to be connected to the earth as much as I can. I would say about 95% of the day I am grounded because I believe it's, it's just a no-brainer. Go outdoors, take your shoes off. Stand barefoot on the earth or sit on the earth, put your feet and your hands on the earth, and you will instantly notice the pain and inflammation begin to drain from your body. I got my life back is probably the most common refrain that I hear. Thank you, I got my life back. I got my life back. Even if the science isn't yet considered mainstream, there is an undeniable and growing number of people who are experiencing the benefits of grounding. As for us and our family, we're spending more time outside and spending more time together. And yes, we're keeping our feet firmly planted on the ground. Does our daughter still get sick? Yeah but not nearly as much. Maybe she's growing out of it, or maybe she's just growing up grounded.
Well, that was a very powerful uh, document documentary. So, um, Clint, uh, if you can hear me, uh, thank you so much for that 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 really powerful documentary. It was very informative, and um, as a matter of fact, not realizing I was going to be doing this today, I uh, I actually. Um, went to the beach this morning and walked on the beach huh. without shoes on because I've heard of grounding and I've, I've, I like the idea <laughs> of it. And I didn't realize who I'd be interviewing, you know, today. And it's just, it's an absolute pleasure to meet the uh, the father of, of of grounding. So thank you very much. So thanks, Ma thanks, Michael. <laughs> so we're about to begin our live Q&A. Um, okay. But before we do, I just want to explain to the audience uh, a, a few quick things. So uh, we do not take questions from uh, directly from the chat. What we do is we use the raise hand function in Zoom. If you're not familiar with how to do that, you're gonna to go to the second to the right button on the bottom of the Zoom window. It's called reactions. You're gonna click on that and then you'll select raise hand from the pop-up window. When I call your name, I will unmute you and prompt you to state where you are from and to ask your question. And we just ask that everyone keep their questions brief and on topic. So um, so real quickly, how, how much inflammation? I mean, I, you know, we, we, there, there are so many doctors that we're speaking to. Uh, inflammation is obviously a huge problem. Um, you know, a lot, most of these doctors come from like the plant-based dietary kind of perspective. Um, how, how much um, inflammation can we eliminate by doing grounding? Well, um, first of all, remember, I'm from the uh, electrical or communications industry. Mm -hmm. And in that industry, we have to ground everything to the earth, you know, primarily because of aerial wires and all of those kind of things. But, you know, systems are going to get hit by lightning. So, or you're going to have an electrical event and heat will create fire. And so the number one reason we ground everything to the earth is to prevent fire. And um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, you maybe better ask me, you know, I, I went off to the side there. Please. Oh. Oh, so I was just asking how much of how much of the information that that people have in, in our bodies can be eliminated oh. through grounding? Well, yeah, the point I was trying to make there was that you can't have the reason we ground everything to the earth is to prevent inflammation. So twenty five years ago, when I stumbled into this and started looking at it, uh, the thought that went through my mind is how can you have inflammation or fire in a body when it's grounded because the body is conductive. And so that's kind of what started this whole thing. But chronic, there's two, there's two or three different kinds of inflammation. But <clears throat> the inflammatory burst, that's a normal phenomenon that goes on 24-7. Whether you're breathing, depends on your environment, it depends on everything in, 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 in your, that you're exposed to. Uh, <clears throat> but the... Um, uh, the immune system, you know, is so it's sitting there working 24 hours a day, and it's what got us here. You know, it's it's what protects us and, and you know, the war that goes on inside. But anyhow, so the whole point was very simple that I never could understand how you could have inflammation in a grounded body. So for the last 25 years, I've been putting together and supporting and promoting all of the research that we've done, probably close to 50 studies now and um more coming and it's it, you would think that you know it's um it's it's obvious but it isn't and so it's it's one of those things where you really have to uh convince people to take their shoes off get outdoors put their feet on the earth and notice the change that begins to occur in their body but <clears throat> but anyhow um in nature we would be grounded 24 7 for a, billion years all of our progenitors uh you know all life lived on the earth came out of the earth we were all grounded to the earth so we all had a negative charge on our body you cannot have inflammation in a body when it is grounded and i'm talking about chronic inflammation 
Great. Thank you. And um, how, what would be the minimum amount that we would need to ground per day? Like would two hours a day, like if we have one of those, the grounding mats, or do we need a sheet where we're sleeping on it for eight hours a day? And, and do we have to be directly on the sheet or do we need a blanket on, on top of the, or is it, a, is it okay if we have a blanket on top? Yeah. Well, and the first question is, um, you know, how long? Mm -hmm. And and I can tell you that the, the easiest way to monitor that is if you have any pain in your body, it's really a message from your body to get me grounded, put the fire out, because pain is from inflammation. You can't have pain unless you have inflammation first. So if you have pain in your body, that's indication that you have inflammation in your body. So, <clears throat> but in, like I said, in nature, you would be grounded 24 seven because your immune system works 24 seven. But the short answer is very simple. Uh, and uh, as long as you have pain, you need to get grounded, stay grounded. As soon as the pain stops, then you can go out and run again for you know, however far you can get before the pain comes back. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, grounding goes, any amount of grounding is good. Um, but if you have, if you are predisposed to inflammation, it usually has to do with your environment, your lifestyle, your living environment. Uh, what you're eating, what you're, you know, just what you're doing. Uh, it's an environmental, um, to me, inflammation is an environmental health disorder. In 1960, we, you know, we invented synthetic sole shoes. And, and after that, now, you know, 60 years later, almost everybody is wearing a synthetic shoe that insulates the body from the earth. Prior to that time, uh, when I was a kid, we were always grounded. I mean, we were barefoot most of the time, you know, back in the 50s and, and the 40s, and um, uh, never given a thought. But And then, uh, so it's it's really, in the 1960s, we put shoes on, we brought carpets into the home, we started sleeping on foam beds, and we just started moving away from and becoming more disconnected from the earth. And now we're spending, you know, the entire day without any physical um, contact with the earth. And so our bodies, uh, you know, the inflammation is, is a byproduct of, it, it, it's, it's, it's a challenge to explain it real quick, but in nature, you would be, you, you would be grounded, you, meaning your body would be connected to the earth. And if your body is connected to the earth, then it absorbs the free electrons of the earth. And that creates a what we call a negative charge on the body. And, and as long as you have a negative charge on your body, you cannot have inflammation. It's just against the laws of physics. So this is really, it's an environmental health disorder. We, we, we changed our environment. We changed our living environment. We put shoes on. We live above the earth. We're kind of like astronauts now living in what in electrical, what we call free space because you're not touching the ground. And, um, and our bodies are on fire. And um, so <clears throat> there are the handful of products that we've developed over the years, uh, which primarily came from when we would do our studies, we had to find ways to ground people in order to monitor them for a half hour or an hour or days or whatever, and monitor the changes and track the changes. And um, and that's where we verified that you can't have inflammation and in when you're grounded, because as soon as we ground a human being, the inflammation actually drains from the body. You can actually see it with thermal imaging. And um, uh, so it's, it's quite remarkable. Um, but the problem is we all live in the world we've created, and it's really hard to step back into nature. <laughs> but so anyhow, these products that we, that we created along the way, we call them ground planes, uh, basically, you know, there are, you know, a little mat that you can put your feet on uh, or you can put it on your desk and put your keyboard on it. Uh, but the most important thing that we created was um, because one day we were asking, everybody was wanting these things. And uh, one day we asked, well, what's the number one thing we can give people um, that they can take home and use? Because most people don't comply with anything very long. They're not going to do anything other than what's normal. And so we decided that the best thing to do is to make something they could sleep on. And that's where we came up with the carbon mats. Eventually they started out silver and cotton and those didn't hold up and last long enough. So we went to the, the carbon mats and now, I mean, they'll last for years. And, but anyhow, so 
the idea was very simple. You take it home, put it on your bed, connect it to the ground. And, and then you, all you have to do is lay down and go to sleep. You don't have to do anything different every day. You know, just do what you normally do. Just lay down and go to sleep. Uh, people who have chronic pain, you know, their body's on fire. They have flaring arthritis, flaring um, you know, lupus MS, any of the chronic health disorders, um, uh, significant health disorders, life-threatening health disorders. Uh, I always tell them it's very simple. <clears throat> you know, I'm I'll be I'm 79, so <laughs> pushing 80 here. Um, so <clears throat> uh, to me, you know, the older you get, entropy is real. I mean, you know, <laughs> the body starts to uh, uh, you know disappear. But anyhow, so the older you get, the more uh, issues you have to deal with. But you know, I uh, you know I sleep grounded, but I sleep directly on the black mat myself, and I have for years. And, 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 but I don't have any pain, you know, I'm, I, I can walk, I can run, I can, I can do, I, I can work. I mean, you know, I'm, the main thing is I can work and, um, <clears throat> and I enjoy what I do every day. I get up and I, I've, you know, I've got to go and get more done. And so, so it's really, um, uh, a lot of people really have a hard time sleeping on, <clears throat> you know, carbon because it's, it's, it, it'll stay at room temperature. And when you lay on it, then it comes from course the body temperature, but it's cooler to sleep on, especially in the summer. That's nice. And um, but it's just different <laughs> because we've all been sleeping on cotton sheets or synthetic sheets. So <clears throat> but it is OK to sleep, to put the sheet on you know, a regular cotton sheet on top of the grounding pad or the grounding mat, because <clears throat> When you lay down on the bed, your body is, you're going to perspire a cup of water or half a cup of water every night. So there's a humidity that's created under the covers and uh, between you and the, and the sheet and the, and the mat. So, <clears throat> and that humidity makes the product, makes the sheet conductive. Um, so it's, it, it all works, but people who have a lot of, uh, inflammatory, hot burning pain, those kind of things. They like to lay directly on it because in 15 minutes, their pain will disappear. Uh, with the sheet, if they have a lot of pain, some people just don't seem to get as much benefit. Once you're fairly healthy, then you can sleep with the sheet, no problem. It's not an issue. Did that answer that question? You, you answered, yeah, you answered all the, the questions that I'd asked. That, that's perfect. I'm going to throw one out to the audience. Uh, Marcus, please state where you're from and ask your question. Yes, hi, Clint. This is Marcus from the Netherlands. Uh huh. Um, I was wondering in your uh, work on grounding, did you ever come across a phenomenon uh, which is called the hum, in which people all over the world, or at least people that are sensitive to it, uh, seem to hear a, a low frequency noise or humming? And could grounding have a, a positive effect on this? Well, the hum, you know, you're talking about the hum of the earth. Um, the earth is, first of all, it's spinning. I don't know. I, I don't know the tech anymore, but, you know, the earth is spinning, you know, traveling around the sun and, and the, you, you have the molten core of the earth, which is churning, you know, um, and, and so there's a lot of, uh, activity going on on the earth it's like in your you know an example would be like in your body if you take a stethoscope and and listen to your heart listen to anything in your body your muscles everything you can hear everything and it's loud and it's very noisy but for some reason we don't hear it you know in our daily lives <clears throat> but it's with the earth the earth is 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 very noisy uh, and you have the you know the the waves hitting the beaches uh, in a rhythmic pattern, you have the Schumann resonance, you, but you, it's a very noisy thing. But yes, some people can are much more sensitive, uh, and they can sense these um, um, hums, let's say. And what I have learned over the years is, after all these, you know, twenty-five years of research, and the hum is really to a lot of people, if they're very sensitive, uh, what it is, they they have exhausted adrenals. And and for and let me I need to explain that when you know it's your sympathetic nervous system senses everything in the environment it hears everything and and you know it, it's our part of our fight or flight if there's a noise then your sympathetic nervous system is going to 
and you know, elevates a little cortisol and and bring you know tense up the body a little bit. <clears throat> but we have a parasympathetic, which is designed to dampen the effect of the sympathetic to create that few seconds that you can make a decision whether to run or to to fight you know the bear in the woods concept but <clears throat> today we live in such an ele such a an, um we're overstimulated we live in a chronically elevated sympathetic state and our adrenals become exhausted because the adrenals have a limited supply but the sympathetic, I mean, the parasympathetic from is being chronically stimulated by the environment and noise and just life. And then, but as the, the, the parasympathetic only has a limited amount of resources, so it, it becomes exhausted. And you've heard the term exhausted adrenals. And <clears throat> so then the sympathetic becomes more predominant. And the more you can you can feel everything more. You feel it's like people who are very sympathetic. Uh, I mean, yeah, overdrive. They, you know, they they can feel static electricity. They can it, touch things, and it makes it makes it, it's easy to be irritated by, you know, temperature changes, noise, anything, even colors on a TV set. They'll be sensitive to. So, <clears throat> but it has more to do with. Um, adrenal fatigue. And um, so the issue is more about restoring the adrenals and reducing anything in the environment that you can to reduce the, uh, you know, the stimulation, the chronic bear in the woods, fight or flight stimulation that's going on just in life. You know, you turn on a TV and there's drama and trauma and all this kind of stuff. Well, our body responds to all of that, or no matter what it is. Uh, listen to, to good music calms the mind. So it's it's just part of our world today, and you know that's why uh, I try to get people as much as possible. Just go outdoors, take your shoes off, put your feet on the earth, and and drain the inflammation because that quiets the sympathetic nervous system and gives the adrenals a break so that they can so that the adrenals can begin to recover. They won't recover that quick, but they but you take the stress off of the sympathetic forever driving and forever pushing. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. um, so this is a, you know, an evidence-based, uh, you know, we like to consider ourselves evidence-based here. And you mentioned the 50 studies that you've done. Can you speak about the, the various studies that were touched on in the documentary, but if you could talk a little bit more about um, the type of research, has anything been done by third parties to, uh, to verify this? Yeah, most of the most all of the studies were done by third parties. I mean, they were done by researchers at various universities or um, various professions. Uh, the only thing I ever did was ask the question, and because my background is electrical <laughs> and uh, different, so I I didn't actually do the studies. I was involved in a couple of them, but primarily what I did was promote the studies. And I retired when I was about 50. I was fortunate that I had a pocket full of change and I could go out and uh, encourage. And nobody does anything for free. <laughs> so if you want research done, you have to pay for it. And, um, <clears throat> and so I was able to um, promote and in some cases fund these studies. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, but again, I had no direct influence or import on them most of most everybody was so skeptical they, they didn't even want to participate in it because they felt it might be embarrassing <laughs> to to associate with something uh as menial as barefoot you know but anyhow um so the studies the first study that i think is the most significant that uh that was um a bona fide study with irbs and so on was was the cortisol study and cortisol is, again, it's related to your fight and flight. And anytime there's a stimulus in the environment, you, you know, your body, there's it's like if somebody drops a, a glass, well, your, your cortisol is going to skyrocket because you're on guard all of a sudden. You don't want to step on it or whatever. But, <clears throat> but anyhow, uh, so we decided to um, do, a, do, you know, to measure cortisol. What we did is this was a doctor and uh 
down in uh, San Diego. He was an anesthesiologist. Um, <clears throat> and what he did was we, we would uh, measure cortisol every four hours for 24 hours. So we had a circadian profile. And then we would freeze it and then send it to a lab. And then the lab would give you the results back. And then we went and redid this same test um, six to eight weeks later with each subject. And what we saw, and these all these studies are on the Earthing Institute uh, net, but the <clears throat> the um, what we saw was before everybody's cortisol profile was kind of like spaghetti all over the place. And after they had been grounded for six to eight weeks, everybody's cortisol synchronized into a band. It would be high in the morning, then it would drop down to near zero at midnight and then stay there. And at 4 a.m., then it would start skyrocketing. And the, the surprise was what in the environment is causing or cueing the um, cortisol to become elevated at 4 a.m. because there's no light, there's no sound. And so anyhow, I did a bunch of work myself because of the communications industry. And, and we learned in the old days that telegraphs wouldn't work, uh, wouldn't start working. You know, they would only work when there was sunlight or daylight. But <clears throat> a few hours before morning, then they would start working. And what it was is as the earth turns and the you know, the sunlight starts to come, then it, it, it creates electrical eddies and so on. But, you know, so there is uh, noise in the earth. It starts The amplitude of the earth's electric field begins to increase around 4 a.m. Very, very slight. But that's when cortisol. So, so that's coming from the earth. And so that was one of the first things we learned. But anyhow, um, but that was an important study because. Uh, everybody that, uh, you know, we were measuring sleep, uh, do people sleep better or, uh, and, and pain and everybody, you know, has significant reduction of pain and, and everybody had improved sleep plus a, a plethora of other things that were anecdotally reported. And so that was the first study and probably the most important study because we recognized that it was the sympathetic nervous system. And, you know, cortisol, the fight or flight, your stress hormone uh, that's at play here. And <clears throat> and then the biggest trouble or the the challenge we had is we we defined with many different studies that pain goes away in, you know, five to 15 minutes. If you have hot burning pain in, in a wrist, you can put an electrode patch on it connected to the ground and the pain's going to go away. And so we could validate that all day long. But the question was, what's the mechanism of action? What is actually causing that pain to, to go away? And um, it was in 204, uh, about six weeks, six years after we started, that uh, Ritger and the boys back at Boston Mass came out with a study you know, on inflammation. This was, the word inflammation was on, I think it was on time, time Time magazine, there was a showed the body on fire and 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 they had the word inflammation. Mm -hmm. And they said uh, the bottom line of the study was you don't have all these health disorders that everybody you know wears. What you have is chronic inflammation. And this inflammation causes uh, <clears throat> uh, depending on your lifestyle and your environment and everything, your beliefs, all this stuff that goes on in our body, you know, <clears throat> it can. Uh, if you have chronic inflammation, it'll manifest in as cardiovascular disease in some people. Uh, it'll manifest as lupus or MS or arthritis or cancer or whatever. But all of these health disorders are because the immune system has become challenged and the body is on fire. And um, at that time, I, I looked at that article and I said, well, if if inflammation is... Um, the cause of all these health disorders and inflammation manifests as pain, then I said, we have the answer to all of these problems because in nature, um, you know, it's like animals who live in the wild. And cancer doesn't exist in the wild population. Um, <clears throat> uh, on the other hand, animals who live indoors with their owners 
they all manifest health disorders, inflammation-related health disorders, similar to their owners. 50% of animals will die from cancer, just like their owners. And, and so, but in the, in the wild, uh, inflammation just doesn't manifest. Um, <clears throat> so, but on the other hand, these animals are living grounded 24 seven animals who live indoors are insulated from the earth. So <clears throat> it's an environmental health disorder. I mean, we changed our environment. We came from the earth. We lived on the earth, we eat the earth, we breathe, you know, and then we've disconnected and we lost that that electrical ground. It's like the, you know, that's why we ground everything electrical to the earth to maintain electrical stability and to prevent fire. Well, inflammation is fire. <laughs> and um, so, but so anyhow, we kept doing the studies. We did a lot of biofeedback studies and a lot of, um, but the most important study was uh, done by Stephen Sinatra and Gaetan Chevalier. Um, in, um, Stephen was a cardiologist and, and Gaetan is a physicist in, down in San Diego. But anyhow, what, what we did is we measured the electrical surface charge on red blood cells. Um, and what we found is after you ground somebody for 15, 20 minutes, that you increase the negative charge, the amount of free electrons on the surface of a red blood cell by nearly 300%. And, and then what happens is because of that, uh, the red blood cells, they, they act more like negatively charged magnets. They will repel each other. You know, you can't push them together. And then that thins the blood or normalizes the blood viscosity. And then the blood can get in and out of the capillaries easier. And in the process, it can uh, oxygenate the tissue and clean up the debris and, and so on. But uh, it was, so part of it was circulation and, um, but improving circulation. But the fact that when you ground the body, that the blood itself equalizes with the earth, the little red blood cells become negative, just like the earth itself. So <clears throat> there's a, you know, and when you lose that, then, what happens is as you breathe and, and you know as you do what you do metabolism you start giving up electrons you start losing this negative charge <clears throat> and then uh, and, and this is all part of these studies but then what happens is well we, it finally came down one day that i was reading some papers on neutrophils and how the um immune system works, how white blood cells, um, how they work. And so what happens generally, if you have a pathogen or, you know, something in your body, a damaged cell that needs to be removed, which goes on all day, every day, um, the immune system will send a neutrophil and neutrophil will swim over to where the pathogen is. And it's kind of a jelly type cell. And it'll just wrap itself around the pathogen so it's fully encased and then it will release what we call reactive oxygen species uh, reactive is, is means it's an electrical word it means it's electrically charged and it has enough energy that it can strip an electron away from a pathogen and that's how the immune system destroys pathogens and so that all makes sense. That's called the oxidative burst. It goes on all day long in your body. And, um, but anyhow, um, so using some cowboy logic, because I grew up on a ranch, you know, and, um, but now, so it just dawned on me that, well, if we're reducing inflammation, when we ground somebody, then what, what's happening is we're absorbing electrons from the earth because the body is short of electrons because we're wearing shoes. So it was just kind of a cowboy, uh, you know, add this, subtract that, and you end up with this concept. Well, uh, it's like pouring water on a fire. I mean, uh, oxidation, you know, whether it's a fire or whether your body's burning. Um <clears throat> It, it's all the same. And um, so, so anyhow, we were able to determine that it was loss of free electrons because every time we would ground a, a human, 
then within 15 minutes, the pain would resolve. Uh, this is grounding them with patches, electrode patches. Uh, we put it on the palm of their hand or wherever they had an issue. And within a few minutes, then the pain would resolve and we could actually see it with thermal imaging. So we have, we did quite a few thermal imaging type studies so, so you can see uh, inflammation before and you can actually see it in, in, in decrease in just 15 to 30 minutes. And then we did, we measured, you know, um, you know, the, the late, you know, it, one of the main main studies we did was up at the University of Oregon with uh, Dick Brown. Uh, he trained Olympian runners, and um, <clears throat> so the biggest challenge they have is delayed onset muscle soreness. That means after you you go work out or whatever, then you create a lot of inflammation in your body as you're building up muscle, and then. Sometimes, you know, like two or three days later, it's very it's challenging to even walk because you have so much inflammation in your body. So what we did is we grounded, you know, I think uh, they're 21-year-old uh, students, uh, male students, and we had them, you know, do two or three sets of um, <clears throat> exercises that would uh, inflame the calves or burn the calves. And then we had them sleep in a in a controlled room um, for, I think it was seven days, uh, and we measured their, uh, you know, their blood every day. Um, <clears throat> they did an MRI. Uh, so they could measure everything that went on in the body. And as an end result, the people who weren't grounded in the study, they, they had normal um, uh, delayed onset muscle soreness, meaning that they were stiff and sore, and, and three days later, you know, they're hobbling around. But the subjects who were grounded, uh, they they had significantly less delayed onset muscle soreness. But most of all, their bilirubin and things like that uh, maintained constant. Were the um, so they had just less inflammation, and um, so it's. Uh, it's just we were just confirming in all of our studies. We weren't trying to say do this to reduce in, um, delayed onset muscle soreness. We were doing just to, so we could see that the only way we could induce inflammation in a human body was through physical exercise. So, so, but anyhow, by doing that, creating the inflammation in these younger gentlemen, then you could see all of the. Um, biological, uh, you know, activity and the changes. And so what we were able to do was to just show that inf inflammation does not manifest in a grounded body. And then if you do have inflammation, you put your feet on the earth and the inflammation will drain away. And you can see that with thermal imaging and, and, and the, you know, the physical reporting and so on. So anyhow, it's, um, um, that's what we did all right are perfect. we still perfect so uh, i we've got about two minutes so i'll ask you a real quick question here um is there any like ways of grounding that are more effective or does it really matter to swimming versus walking on dirt or walking on sand or walking on grass is there, is there any difference or if you're once you're grounded it's electrical and and you know it doesn't really matter the, the way you do it well, you're right. It is electrical, and it, and and the Earth has a negative surface charge, uh, the, the, you know, universally. So, so what you, the issue is, if it's if there's moisture on the ground, like you know, grass in the morning got a little bit of dew, that's going to be uh, more conductive, but your body will still equalize to Earth potential, no matter what. It may take a few seconds longer. Uh, or maybe a few seconds faster, depending on the medium that you're standing on. But but the concept is, you know, to stand on bare earth, whether it's dirt, sand, um, grass, even no grass, um, that's best. Concrete is sim quite similar to, um, you know, to, to earth because it's made of earthen materials. Uh, the only thing that's not conductive is wood, asphalt, um, shoes, of course, or anything that's synthetic that insulates between you and the earth. For instance, I was out in the garage the other day doing something and, and I was measuring and I was barefoot and I, and I couldn't read and get a grounded reading that I realized that there was a sealer on the concrete 
uh, and and it looked like it was concrete, but it was actually sealed with a plastic coating. And so then I had to step outdoors on the sidewalk, and then I was grounded. But so anyhow, anything plastic, anything paint, anything, uh, you know, it's like between you and the earth is going to inhibit uh, and prevent your body from absorbing earth's free electrons and maintaining earth potential. Um, but great. they're all part of, they're all pretty much equal. All right, great. Well, that ends our Q and a. So I wanted to thank you for your work and <laughs> I'm definitely going to be getting, um, one of those, uh, one of those, uh, grounding mats that you, that you mentioned. So cool. thank you. We could unmute the audience. Thank you. Thank you.